In this video, we're going to see how we can write queries that join two or more tables together. And those joins are based on a mathematical notion called Cartesian product. If we have sets of values, A, B, and C, if we want to just take two of them and form their Cartesian product, and we do that using an X symbol, what that gives you is the set of all possible ordered pairs in which the first element comes from the first set and the second element comes from the second set. So for example, if our two sets are set A is apple pear orange, set B is cat dog, then the Cartesian product of A and B is this set of ordered pairs. And in each ordered pair, the element from set A comes first, the element from set B comes second. If we take the Cartesian product of three sets, A, B, and C, then we get the set of all possible ordered triples, in which the first element comes from set A, second element comes from set B, third element from set C, and here's an example of that. And then we can extend this even further to four or more sets. And the term that is used there is ordered tuples. In the relational model, we can take the Cartesian product of two or more relations. And that forms all possible combinations of the rows from those relations. So for example, if I have the relation enrolled and the relation majors in, then the Cartesian product of those two will start with all of the columns from enrolled and then we'll be adding on the columns from majors in. It's worth noting that sometimes when you combine columns like this, you end up with two columns that have the same name because in this case both the enrolled table and majors in have a column called student ID. And in that case we're going to have to prepend the table name and use a dot in between the table and column names in order to distinguish between them. So those, that's what the set of columns looks like in the Cartesian product. What do the rows look like? So the first row in enrolled is combined with all of the possible rows in majors in, and that gives us the first five rows in the Cartesian product. And you can see all of these rows have the same values from enrolled, but then we're drawing the different rows from majors in. And then the second row from enrolled is combined with all five of the rows in majors in, etc. And so I can't show them all, but we're going to end up with 25 rows in the Cartesian product because each of the five rows from enrolled is combined with five rows from majors in. Now the reason we care about Cartesian product is because sometimes when we're doing a select command, we need to draw from more than one table. And to do that, we're going to put the tables that we need in the from clause separated by commas. And whenever you have multiple tables in the from clause, the resulting operation is known as a join. And it's essentially going to begin by forming the Cartesian product of those tables. Now we don't actually end up seeing the full Cartesian product, not normally anyway, because we're going to be careful to focus on only the combinations that we care about. And then after that Cartesian product is formed, the remaining clauses are applied to that Cartesian product in the same order as they would be in a single table command. So take for example the problem of finding the major of a particular student like Alan Turing. So we're going to need both the student table and the majors in table because the student table is the only place that we have Alan Turing's name, and then the majors in table is where we can find his major. And so we're going to have to put both of those tables in the from clause, and again that's going to start us off with the full Cartesian product. Now to prevent us from getting the full Cartesian product, because we don't really want that, we have to put in what's called a join condition. And this is the condition right here we're saying we only want the combinations in the Cartesian product in which the value from the ID column matches the value from the student ID column because those are the combinations that actually make sense. And so we have to make sure to put that join condition in because otherwise we'll get combinations in the Cartesian product that don't make sense. In addition, we can have this test to make sure we're focusing on Alan Turing so the join condition is not the only thing we need, but whenever you have n tables in the from clause, 
you typically are going to need n minus 1 join conditions. So this time we had two tables, and therefore we needed one join condition. If we had three tables, we would need two join conditions, etc. So let's look at this query in more detail. We start with the two tables, because they're both in the from clause. And again, we're essentially forming their full Cartesian product first. And that's going to give us 25 rows. Then we go to the where clause. And let's apply the join condition first. We have an and, so we have to have both of these be true. But let's focus first on the join condition. And again, we're looking for rows in the Cartesian product in which the ID value matches the student ID value. And that's going to narrow it down to just these five rows from the Cartesian product. And then our other condition in the WHERE clause narrows it down to just the row involving Alan Turing. And so we end up with just this one row. And then the SELECT clause gives us just the department name.